do not accept the lie that God wants us to tolerate oppression. He wants us to conquer it. For all those watching by television out there in YouTube land, we'd like you to know we pray for you every single day. I want you to open your Bibles, please, to the book of Matthew, chapter 26, and verse 27. Many of you have heard this chapter and verse most of the time when we do communion, but probably many of you don't really understand the depth of what he said. In Matthew, chapter 6, verse 27, in 28, I'd love to hear your voices as you repeat them with me. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. Verse 28, for this is my blood. Repeat that again. This is, whose blood is it? This is my blood of the, of the, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus said, this is my blood of a New Testament. Look up here. This is my blood of a brand new Testament. So if there's a New Testament, right, there must have been an Old Testament, which has been cut in his blood. Whose blood was it before? In the Old Covenant, whose blood was it before? Animals. He says, this is my blood of a new covenant. New. Say new. So many Christians living in the old, the old system of works, seeking forgiveness over and over and over and over and over again. Old. New. The majority of Christians I come in contact with do not know their new covenant rights. Most Christians. That's why Christians cannot stand against the wiles of the enemy. They don't know their new contractual covenant rights. Instead, look up here. They're standing against the enemy in a state of passivity. Passivity. They're passive. They're not authoritative because you don't know the contract. You don't know what it says. You don't understand what it means. You don't study it. You don't know it. And because you don't know it, you cannot stand there with any degree of authority. I was in Publix, I told you the other day. And, and they have, the, when you walk in the store at Publix, they have buy one, get one free. You guys ever been there? Buy one, get one free. And I'm going to tell you something. When it's buy one, get one free, you better get the other one for free. That's what the contract says. And I'm, I'm checking out Lion at Publix. And I hear a, a woman, she bought two jars of peanut butter. And she was so happy because she was going to get one for free. And bloop, 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 and the and the register does not reflect that the other cans for free. She says to the the cashier, "Excuse me, I don't see free on here." She goes, "Ma'am, that is not a buy one get." She goes, "Oh yes, it is. You march right out there right now, and then you walk in there, does blah blah blah, says right on there, buy one cans of peanut butter, get one other for free." 
She knew the contract. She stood there defiantly, convincingly, positively. Price check, register two, please. Price check, register two. The guy marches back with a jar of peanut butter and says, she's right. Tell me something. Who doesn't speak up when they know the rules in the contract? The reason why Christians are passive, they have absolutely no idea what this new covenant speaks about. They have no idea. Well, the pastor told me, the pastor told you what? Look up here, this is important. This is very, very important. If you do not use your New Testament covenant rights of Christ daily. No matter how hard you try, you will always be harassed by the enemy. You will always be harassed by the enemy when you don't know what the New Testament says. If you do not use the authority of Christ Jesus in your daily lives, I'm going to say it once again, because I want you to get this through your Old Testament head. Amen? No matter how hard you try, no matter how much you pray, you will always be harassed in the demonic realm. Jesus said when he was tempted, he said, it is written. It is written. Prayer and repentance are good, but they are not enough. Look up here. They are not enough to get the enemy off your back and off the back of your children. In truth, the Holy Spirit says, you face your enemy, and in the name of Jesus, you state who you are in Christ, and you command that that spirit come out of your boys your girls, your husband. You take authority in the name of Jesus. I pray three times a day. Listen, listen, listen to you people. Do not accept the lie that God wants us to tolerate oppression instead of conquering it. I got to say that again. I got one amen over there in the peanut gallery over there. <laughs> Do not accept the lie that God wants us to tolerate oppression. He wants us to conquer it. Amen. Eight more. We're doing better here. Amen. <laughs> Fear. Self-pity, anger, immoral thoughts, fleshly lusts will not go away by themselves. The enemy must be confronted. Haven't you learned this yet? Haven't you learned this yet? That woman at public said, hang on a moment. It's two for one on that peanut butter, and it's gonna, I'm going to get the second can for free. Price check, register two. Many people, most people, that don't know their covenant rights, fold their hands, sit back and say, I guess there's just nothing I can do. Look. Look. Forget everything your church has ever taught you. If they haven't taught you this one thing. What matters the... Are you sure you're awake? I want you to forget everything your church has ever taught you. Except this one thing. What matters the most is what the contract says. Not what your pastor says. 
he may have absolutely no understanding of it either. So let's take a look at the new. The new. And by the way, this new was not cut in the blood of bulls and goats. Are you awake? This contract was not cut with the blood of bulls and goats. This contract was cut with the blood of our Savior. Now, I want you to lift your hand and say, Holy Spirit, I cannot learn this on my own. I need you, Holy Spirit, to shake a rattle and roll the religious stones in my head. Do it now. In Jesus' name. Oh, I hear a lot of rattling going on there. Amen. 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 All right, here we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Are you learning something? Old, new. Old, new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh. Oh, here we go. Mwah. Therefore, therefore, say therefore, if any man be in Christ. Are you one of the therefores? Are you in Christ? All right, comma. He is, he is an old creature. He's old. What? New. new. He's new. He is a new creature. New. Where's the old? Old things. Who said dead? Dead. Dead. Old things are dead. Throwing that in. Passed away. All things are become new. Why? Because you go to church on Sunday? Huh? If any man be in Christ. In. If any man be in Christ. Say a new creation. I like that word better than creature. Some people act like creatures sometimes. A new, I'm a new creation. Created by who? Woo! Created by Jesus. You see, religion has tried to create you to be something you can never be. Right? Religion has tried to create you to be something you will never be. We did not decide to be recreated ourselves. Neither did God simply clean up your old nature. He gave you a brand new one. I don't think you heard that. There was six amens there and the rest of you were snoring asleep over here. God did not clean up your old act. He didn't repair your old heart. He said, I'm going to give you a brand new one. New. Say new. Yeah. He gave you something entirely fresh. Fresh and new. A new creation is new. Bought by the blood of the Lamb. Just as he created the whole universe. New. Say, I am. Go ahead, touch this new creation. Just be gentle with it now. Be gentle. Say, I am a new creation. The old's gone. Is dead. But I want him back. No, no, no. The old is dead. But I want him. I want, I want just. No, 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 no. The old refers. Look up here. The old refers to everything that is part of the old nature. Uh, like, like pride. Remember that? Remember the. Remember the kind of love we used to show to people in the old nature? I love you if you love me. 
Remember that kind of love? Sin? How about this one? The reliance upon works. How about that? Good people go to heaven. Good people. If you're good, if you're good, you go to heaven. Now oh, that's the old. Opinions, habits, passions. Say dead. dead. Oh, six of you said dead. Say dead. 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 Goodbye. Goodbye. Old. Old. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. What we once loved is dead. Are you awake? What we once loved is now dead and passed away and we bury it in the ground. Especially your supreme love for yourself. I pray three times a day. I go to church. Oh, I go to church four times a week. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't cuss. I don't swear. Why wouldn't God want me in heaven? Look at me. The new creation, the new creature, no longer looks outwardly. The new creation looks inwardly. Romans 8.37. Come on, read it with me. Nay. Come on. In all these things, we are... What's that word right there? More. Than... Through him that loved us. Ah. More than. Say more than. The word conquer, the word conquer is the word which means victorious over your adversary. You're more than that. More than that. To be more than a conqueror means we not only achieve victory, but our victory is overwhelming. Are you awake? It's got to be overwhelming. It's got to be. No wonder why you don't like going to church on Sunday sometimes. It's so boring. It's got to be overwhelming. It's got to be wonderful. It's got to be exciting. When you pray for someone, you got to see results. You just got to. It's got to happen. We are more than conquerors through Christ. But we won't benefit from that truth until we're fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. Look up here. A millionaire would not benefit from having a million dollars in his bank account if he didn't know it was there, would he? Did you guys hear that? You guys sounded like you just took a little dip or something like, wake up now, wake up, hello. A millionaire would not benefit from having a million dollars if he didn't know he had a million dollars in the bank account. A basketball in the hands of Michael Jordan is worth a million dollars. But a basketball in your hand is worth $39.95. <laughs> Why? Why is a basketball so much more valuable to Michael Jordan than it is to you? He started out just like you. He knew what a basketball could do. A Bible in the hands of a Christian a Bible in the hand of a Christian who knows who they are in Christ makes you more than a conqueror. A Bible in the hands of a dead duck isn't worth the paper it's printed on. Read the contract. Look up here. Read the contract. This is the condition we see in the body of Christ. 
You know what the Holy Spirit does? He unteaches all the junk you learn from religion. That's what I do. Oh, I love teaching, unteaching people. Somebody said the other day, do you love teaching people? Oh, I hate teaching people. I love unteaching people, all the junk they've learned from religion. I do that all day. I unteach people. If the final score of a basketball game is 150 to 1, we know that the put up a really good fight, don't we? But they were no match for the conquerors. They were more than conquerors. The win was beyond the scope of regular victory. Say, I am more, I am more. Come on. I am more. than conquerors. Why? Say why? I'm so glad you asked. Verse 38 will tell you why. Come on, come on, come on. Open up your bibles. Come on. Verse 38. For I am I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things nor things to come. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's more. Verse 39. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall ever <laughs> I love when I talk to people sometimes and Hey, Pastor, I've been praying for the same old problem for years. What do you do? I, well, I pray three times a day. And I said, you know what? You're putting me to sleep. You're putting me to sleep. This is what you do? You pray three times a day? Give me a scripture. Give me a scripture. Come on. Um, hmm, God helps those who help themselves. What? What? <laughs> Listen, many of the attacks of hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, and sword, Paul is saying, stand firm in your faith. Those attacks will come, reminding us that not only will they come, but we will win, 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 we will win. <laughs> Say, I'm more than a conqueror. Stop being so passive. Stop it. Passivity is not power. It's not authority. Do you know that Satan cannot steal your eternal destiny? Did you know that? Did you know that he cannot separate us from the love of God? Do you understand that? Somebody the other day said to me, uh, Can Satan steal my salvation? I said, no, there's another way you can lose it, though. He said, how? I said, you give it back to him. Yeah. That's a bigger kill for him. He said, I am more. I, I said, I am more I than a conqueror. Did you know that whatever battles you're facing today right now, anybody facing a battle here or there? Let me see your hands. Come on, lift them up. God is not the least bit worried about that. Are you sure you're awake? God is not the least bit worried about your battle. If I am his child and the old man is dead and I place my faith in his son, then I have the pledge of his love and protection. I think I need to say that again. If I am his child, are you his child? Okay. Through faith in his son. Do you have faith in his son? Then I have, say you have, I have his pledge of love and protection. Because the old man dead. is dead. Ah, dead. Why do you keep resurrecting him? Because he's the one that gives me all the excuses I need. Yeah, he, he, he tells me, you know. Nobody's been persecuted like me. My mother never loved me. My father never loved me. Nobody loves me. I prayed about this over and over again. Nothing seems to happen. That's because you're a wimp. 
read the contract. <laughs> Listen, me and Ed talk about this all the time. Look it, there is enormous power in knowing who you are in Christ. Oh my God. Are you sure you're awake? I don't know if you're awake. Take a deep breath. All right, you're awake. Okay. Right, Ed? There is enormous, enormous, enormous conquering faith when you know who you are in Christ because of you have read the Vakanatrakta. You know who you are in Christ because the contract tells you who you are. I am a child of God and no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. I am persuaded that neither death nor life. That's why people are so reluctant to change. That's why people love living in their religion. They are... This is worth 100 points. Get ready to write this one down. They are secure in what they know and fearful about what they don't know. I think I need to say that again. Are you ready? The reason people are so reluctant to change is they are secure in what they know. Nothing. And fearful about what they do not know. So do you know who you are in Christ? The old man is... The old man is gone. Finito. Dead. <laughs> Over. I am a new creation in Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but the Christ who lives in me. Can I hear an amen? amen? There was only eight people that said amen there. Amen? amen. You are a new creature in Christ. Stop reminding yourself of the guy or girl that's dead. Can I hear an amen? amen? I heard Joyce right there. That was a good amen right there. Amen? Verse 33. Come on. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to wrap this up. I don't want to make this complicated for anybody. You've got to know the God of the new contract. You cannot learn that. You can't learn that in church. You've got to know him. And I'll tell you what, when you walk into a room and you know God, you know what this does? This only backs up what he speaks to your heart. In the old days, you had to refer to the word. No, we don't refer to the word first. The word is in our heart. We speak forth the revelation of what God says, and every time, the word will back it up. That's what I do up here. What I say is backed up in the word. What I say is backed up in the miracles. Can I hear an amen? amen. That's what we want. Amen? amen? Close your Bibles. Stand to your feetsies if you can. Amen? Let's take communion. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Come on. opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please feel free to contact us at www.spiritlifeworshipchurch.com. Our phone number is 386-586-2202. And our service begins 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Can't wait to see you guys. God bless.